Hello, my name is Chris. Good evening, everybody. My name is Tanisha. And you're here for tonight's program, African American Tech Pioneers. This is gonna be a great program. Um, I just wanna say this is part of our Black History Month uh, celebration. We've had a series of programs and events. And as you can see on your screen, there's a website at hcplc.org slash Black History Month. Uh, we'll post that in the chat section as well, but we invite you to go there and see all the great things that we have for you. So without any more talking on my part, I'm gonna hand things over to Tanisha. And I'll turn my mic and camera off. All right. All right, thank you guys so much for joining me this evening for this wonderful, wonderful program. So we are going to be talking about African American tech pioneers. So one thing besides like the traditional tech fields like computer science and stuff, we got some other people who have done who have some really awesome contributions to American technology or techno world technology for that being said. So now I am going to turn off my camera so that we can dive right in. So of course, as you guys all know, we love to start out all of our programs with a book shout out. So this evening, um, the book that I would like to shout out is Black Magic, What Black Leaders Learned from Trauma and Triumph. So um, a lot of, one of the common threads when I was doing my research on our tech pioneers was how many of them were leaders. So I thought this would be a good book to like get some juices flowing as far as like what these really, really important African-American leaders, um, some lessons that you can learn from them and some of the things that they had to go through. So I thought this would be a really wonderful book that would tie into our theme. This book can be found as a physical book that you can pick up in the library or be a curbside or on one of our um, ebook platforms, Libby by Overdrive. So it is available either way. So I definitely encourage you all to check that out. So let's dive in to our tech pioneers. So the first one I would love to talk about is Miss Mae Jemison. And she was born October 17th, 1960. 56 in Decatur, Alabama. So what makes her qualify for our African-American tech pioneers? She is the first black woman to go to space. She orbited the earth for eight days in 1992. So her background is actually a little bit different than what you would think a, a you know, um, an astronaut would be. Um, she obtained her bachelor's degree in chemical engineering and African-American studies from Stanford and then went on to get her medical degree from Cornell. So she's actually a doctor. So she is not necessarily, she didn't go um, to college just to do, to be an astronaut. She actually went to become a doctor. While she was getting her medical degree at Cornell, and I also thought this was something that was very cool, she also studied dance at the Alvin Ailey Studio. And I don't know if anybody knows anything about the Alvin Ailey Studio, but it is a very famous dance studio, a very famous um, black dance studio. Um, they perform worldwide. So I just thought it was really cool that, you know, she liked, you know, the tech stuff, but she also liked to express herself artistically via dance. So she did study there. Um, she joined the Peace Corps as a medical officer and she went to Liberia and Sierra Leone. So again, I thought it was really cool how she was able to combine her, her undergrad degrees, you know, the African American studies and the engineering and her uh, medical studies to be able to help those in, um, help those in less privileged countries. After she joined the Peace Corps, she settled in California, where she decided when she got back to California, when she after she finished her stint in the Peace Corps, she was like, hey, you know what? I think I want to be an astronaut. So she decided to take some um, graduate level engineering courses in some universities around the state of California. So she took those courses to prepare herself for NASA. And so she applied for NASA and she got accepted. She applied to work for NASA and got accepted. And so in 1992, um, she was able to go to space. So while she was in space, she tested NASA's fluid therapy system. 
conducted bone cell research and observed how tadpoles developed in zero gravity. So a lot of her research was based on how the human body would fare um, long-term in space. Very, very cool. Also, um, for her trip to space, um, a lot of astronauts like to take little tokens with them, um, especially if they're a big first or if they're, you know, just something that that's significant to them, like something that they want to be, you know, sent out to space. So Mae Jemison brought with her a picture of Bessie Coleman, who was one of the um, first black, I think she was the first black woman aviator. So she brought a picture of Bessie Coleman and a West African statuette with her. So those were her contributions <laughs> to the space shuttle. She brought those two things with her to take on the shuttle. So there's a little bit about Ms. Mae Jemison. Our next um, tech pioneer is that we'll be talking about is George Washington Carver. And so I know a lot of you um, at home may be thinking, you know, he he um, was around a little bit before, you know, technology as, know, as we know it, like computers and all of that. And one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about George Washington Carver and put him on the list of African-American tech pioneers is that I really think that he was a pioneer in the concept of computational thinking. So for those of you out there who are not aware of the term com computational thinking, it is the process of breaking down a big problem into smaller steps. And I think that the research that George Washington Carver did, a little bit of what we're going to talk about, is a prime example of computational thinking. So I think that his procedures and his, his studies definitely contributed to how we approach technology today. So let's talk a little bit about George Washington Carver. He was born in 1864 in Diamond, Missouri. And of course, um, because of the situations back then, we're not exactly sure where, um, like when in the year he was born. And he died January 5th, 1943 in Tuskegee, Alabama. So born into slavery, he had to travel to several states to complete his grade school education. So as you can imagine, during that time, it was extremely, even after you know the Civil War, after slavery was abolished, it was a very, very difficult for him to be able to complete his education. Um, schools were still segregated back then, so he had to travel around a lot to be able to complete his education. Um, he then went on to be the first Black student at Iowa State University, where he got his bachelor's and master's degree in agriculture. He also, again, going back to a lot of our tech people had a lot of artistic talent, like Mae Jemison liked to dance. George Washington Carver had a talent for painting flowers and plants, and he also studied art and piano while he was in school. So he was also very artistic. You know, he liked to do, he liked to play the piano and he loved to um, paint pictures of flowers. Makes sense since he was um, really into agriculture. He then became an agricultural scientist, focusing his research and methods to prevent soil depletion and crop rotation. So soil depletion was a huge problem in the South. Um, the South had over um, had you know been producing cotton for almost two centuries centuries, and that cotton was really doing a number on the soil there. So the cotton um, crops were coming in weaker. Um, people weren't making enough money. And so there was a lot of farmers out there that were desperate for, you know, a profitable crop. So he was one of the pioneers of the idea of crop rotation. So crop rotation is growing different types of crop each season instead of growing the same thing every year. So the two biggest crops that he advocated um, to be grown instead of cotton were peanuts and sweet potatoes. He is most well known for his tenure at Tuskegee Institute, where he was the president, and he established an industrial research lab that developed hundreds of uses for the new crops he encouraged Southern farmers to grow. So again, he really, because he was encouraging all of these farmers to grow all of you know, these different crops, well, if you're gonna grow all these sweet potatoes and all these peanuts, then you need to have uses for all of these things. So he had several hundred patents on all of the things that he made. 
So something that's been out there and something that I learned in school was that George Washington Carver was the inventor of peanut butter. This is not true. I was shocked when I learned this. I was like, what? But I've been told since I was little that George Washington Carver came out with peanut butter. He actually did not invent peanut butter. While peanut butter was one of the things that he you know, advocated for, that he said that you should use your peanuts for, and he came up with hundreds of uses for the peanut, he is not the inventor of peanut butter. In fact, the inventor of peanut butter was a Canadian pharmacist who came up with, who um, invented it um, a few years before George, George Washington Carver even went, got to the Tuskegee Institute. However, he did find over a hundred uses for sweet potatoes. Um, one of them being, which is of primary interest to us in the library world, he came up with library paste. So this isn't something that you really see anymore um, because of you know technological advances in books, but library paste is something that is used in book binding or was used in book binding. So he basically came up with the glue where its base was sweet potatoes. And so there is a little bit about George Washington Carver. Our next tech pioneer, and so now we're going to get a little bit more current. So our next tech pioneer is Lisa Jalobter. So her timeline is a little bit different. There's now we're getting into the hardcore or the the you know the real tech stuff because she has made a lot of really awesome contributions to um, technology as we know it today. So she was born in 1971. It was a little bit harder to find some biographical information on her, probably because she is still living and she probably wants to, and she's still actively involved in her organization. So she probably wants to keep her stuff private. But she was born in 1971 and her major contribution is she is the one, she is one, the one who developed the animation used to make GIFs. So we are all familiar with GIFs. I'm sure you put them in your text messages, you put them in your team's messages and all of that. She is the one who made that animation. She also developed the animation to make Shockwave, which is a gaming um, software. So all those little games that are on your cell phone and stuff, she developed the animation behind that. And again, going with that media and entertainment, she was also part of the management team that launched Hulu. So she is responsible for some of your favorite TV shows. She is one of the people that was there working in the background to make sure that those shows and those movies could be brought to you. Um, she is definitely responsible for a lot of the uh, media that we consume. She, at, this, um, at certain times, she also worked for BET as their chief digital officer. And she is very instrumental. And she also worked as a consultant for other businesses, very instrument, instrumental in the um, development of online video. So she got her degree and she got, she attended Brown University and I saw my little typo there. She actually graduated in 1991 uh, with a degree in computer science with concentrations in artificial intelligence and machine learning. So she probably already knew what she wanted to get into when she was in school. So not only did she um, work heavily in the private sector, um, in the private sector, she was also instrumental in the public sector. So she worked as the chief digital officer for the Department of Education under President Obama. So she streamlined the ACA. So the ACA is short for the Affordable Care Act's online application process and led the team that built the Department of Education's college scorecard. So again, not only did she do um, extensive work in the private sector, she's done extensive work in the public sector as well. A lot of those background tech things that you may not think about until it's important, streamlining online forms is really important, especially nowadays. Like we do a lot of our stuff online, so that is very important. And after her tenure with um, the Obama administration, she found she is currently the founder and CEO of a company called Techwitable. It is a platform that addresses bias and discrimination in the workplace. She is also one of only 34 black women to raise over $1 million in venture capital. Thought that was very cool. So she is still making moves to this day. So she's still doing a lot of really awesome things in the field of technology. 
And our last tech pioneer um, today we have is Clarence Ellis. He was born in May 11th, on, in May 11th, 1943 in Chicago and passed May 17th, 2014 in Denver. So um, the reason I included him on our list today is that he is the first African American to earn a PhD in computer science. So he graduated from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign in 1969. Um, while he was growing up, so he grew up in a, um, in a poor family on the south side of Chicago, and a lot of his teachers um, realized his potential. And so they really encouraged him to go to college, even though you know he, was, he wasn't planning on it because he didn't think he could afford it. A lot of his teachers were really advocating for him to go to school. And also um, he, again, as I mentioned, he grew up poor and to earn money for his family, he got a job and I'm using air quotes right now, you can't see it, but he got a job as a computer operator which really was more like a security guard for a um, technology company in 1958. So one of those huge computers that like filled up a whole room, he worked at one of those places as essentially a security guard in the 50s. And when he was able to take a look at those computers, that piqued his interest. And he was like, hey, this is something that I think I want to work with. Um, he um, completed his undergraduate degree at Beloit College, and while he was there, he helped to set up the school's first computer lab. So again, that interest in computers carried him all the way through his college career. So it also took him a little bit longer to get his degree because he was heavily involved in the civil rights movement. So he went to a lot of marches, he went to a lot of protests. Um, he did sit in, so he was very involved in the civil rights movement. So it took him a little bit longer to graduate. Um, one of the highlights of his civil rights activism is that he was present at the um, at Martin Luther King's "I Have a Dream" speech. So he was actually there to see Dr. King speak in person. Um, his professional career includes working with supercomputers at Bell Telephone Laboratories. Um, he also did research and development in several major companies, including Xerox and IBM. Um, he also worked in academia for a long time. So his academic career includes an assistant professor professorship at MIT and Stanford. And he was part of the first team of the team that worked on the first PC. So again, really pioneering things for everybody. He worked on the first PC. And he also worked at the University of, Cal of Colorado, excuse me, Boulder, where he was a tenured professor in the computer science department. So he had a very long and involved career. So unfortunately, um, and not, not unfortunately, so his final act, so one of the final achievements that he had was he was um, awarded a Fulbright scholarship and he decided to use that scholarship to work at the Ashe Ashe I hope I'm not saying this wrong, the Asheshi University in Kenya in 2013. So he went to Kenya to, um, to teach in the computer science department there. And he really worked on computer science and you know getting computer science to every corner of the earth up until the day that he died. So unfortunately he passed away from a pulmonary embolism on a trip back from Kenya to the United States. So he really worked, a, uh, he worked in computers all the way up to the end. And as you can see, he had a very illustrious career in helping us, you know, get our PCs and everything. So he really did a lot for the community. So I also included some other book recommendations. Um, here, so you have um, some that are in but with that deal with like Black history and African Americans. But since we're talking about technology and innovation, I also wanted to include some titles that talk about that as well. All three of these titles can be found in the in the library catalog, and they're available either by physical book, ebook, and in some cases both. So these might be some titles that you're interested in after learning about these tech pioneers. You may be wanting to get the juices flowing, maybe learn a little bit more um, about innovation, learn about a little bit more about what goes into all of that work.
So we also have that for you too. So I am going to bring myself on screen for questions. So Chris, let me know if there are any questions. All right. Excited to uh, answer that. Yes. Um, and yeah, again, if you all have any questions, feel free to post them in the question section of your control panel and we will get some answers for it. But we do have uh, some questions here. Um, someone wants to know, and I, your, your handout may have this information. Uh, who is, who, I guess in recorded history, who is the first African-American inventor? Does that handout have that? <laughs> um let me see let me go back to it that is a Sorry. good question now that is also kind of a layered question because i am sure that there were african americans inventing a lot of really awesome things before they were able to properly take credit for it right. so because of you know being involved you know being enslaved it could be possible that you know a slave on a plantation or in any capacity came up with something that was really awesome and you know because they were technically considered property back then the owner could have taken you know credit for it so unfortunately i think that ants that that question may never be able to be properly answered but as you can see and as we discussed here you know african americans have been making contributions to technology for a while let me look here now we do have on the um on the one of the handouts that Miss Sarah E. Good was one of the first um, African American women to get a patent. So okay. that goes back to you know the mid the the mid to late 1800s. Um, the first African American to get a patent was um, Thomas Jennings. So as far as being properly recognized for an invention, I would say that probably um, those two who I just mentioned were um, some of them. But you know, of course, history. You know, some of that may have been lost to history. Yeah, that's a good point. <clears throat> Thank you. Now, uh, let's see. Now, I know you were talking about a lot of these uh, tech pioneers were creative and artistic, and how that kind of plays in hand with you know learning technology. I know that our library system uh, offers STEAM, which incorporates arts as well. But in general. Um, Someone wants to know, is the library offering any sort of tech instruction or any sort of independent tech learning uh, resources? So yes, so every Wednesday you can join us for our tech topic series. And one of the cool things about this series is that it's a little bite-sized program. So it's every Wednesday at 5.30 and it ends by 5.45. So it's just something that's perfect for you to drop in learn a little something tech related and go on with the rest of your evening we also have a pretty extensive recording or we have a pretty good back catalog of them available on our youtube channel that link is in the chat section so if you want to click on that and take a look at our chat section that is there as well um, also we have um, tech help online so if there's something that you, you know, there's something more, a little bit more, if you need some more specialized attention. So like, I want to get something on my iPad or, you know, I'm having this glitchy thing happen. Um, that's something that we can help with as well. And you're able to schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with a library staff member who could help you out with that. Um, so it would be just like a little one-on-one, -on -one, you know, quick tutoring session where we can help talk you through any tech issues you may be having. Um, we also, you know, try to do some little one-off coding classes, especially for the kids, because coding, you know, going back to what you said, Chris, about, you know, the steam, you know, steam and art being a part of it. Coding is not only about technology; it's really a creative outlet. So um, you can really get creative with the things that you can code, especially for our kids. Yes, that's great. Um, and also, I'll add that if you go online to our website and go to uh, learning uh, resources, learning and research tab, there are some independent uh, learning resources there like Linda and other things. So there's lots there. I'm trying to throw yeah, too much at you. Got to go to our <laughs> website. We've got a lot there for you. There's yes. so many different resources and things there. Um, before we close out, Chris, do we have any last minute questions? Um, one person was uh, mentioning, I know you mentioned Clarence uh, Ellis, his civil rights activism, 
And it, I guess it brought to mind what maybe someone like George Washington Carver experienced because it was, you know, longer ago. Uh, do you know, or in your research, did you find out, did he experience any backlash or any people trying to prevent him from getting credit, anything like that? Um, it wasn't, I'm sure it was there, but because yeah. I think because all the research that I saw is that farmers were desperate for solutions to their issues with, with, you know, their crops. So they were, they, I think their, their, um, will to make money overshadowed who was helping them make the money. So if George Washington Carver was the person who could help them, you know, replenish their soil, help them grow profitable crops, then he was the one who was going to do it. So I think that his innovation in agriculture really, you know, kind of helped people understand what, you know, African Americans can contribute to see them as fully fleshed out people. They're not just property. These are people who really have fresh ideas, who are educated, who can really, you know, help make a difference. All right. Well, I think that is it for our question and answer portion. That was a great presentation, Tanisha. Thank you so much. Uh, you learned a you. lot today. Yeah, this was a really, really, really fun one to research. Um, and we saw there in the questions, um, the, U the YouTube link is the very, very last link that we posted um, at five, about a few minutes ago. So um, while I'm closing out, hopefully you'll see that, but it is there um, and it ends with Tampa Hills Lib. So it's um, in the chat section. So I'll give you guys a few minutes to get the, a few seconds to get the handouts in the chat. While we are wrapping up, thanks again, Chris. Um, as always, you can reach us. Um, you can contact us by phone, email, text, chat, however you think of, you can um, find us, you can find us there. Also, if there are any programs or events, if you wanna see some other of our program or events, we also included the, um, the link for our events there. And the Black History Month link is also sitting in the chat as well. So although we are coming to the end of our Black History Month programming, we have a lot of awesome Black History Month programs already posted to our YouTube channel. We also have really awesome book lists there as well. So we have some really great reading material for you and other resources that can help enhance the rest of your Black History Month. All right. Well, that's it. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Have a great night. Have a great night, Tunisia. And All we'll right, see thank everybody you. Soon. Bye.